And today's video is about the Pet Disc Max 2, or version 2, uh, a device which enables you to, to use SD cards and Wi Fi connections to specific PHP pro, um, uh, pages as disk drives on a pet. So that's going to be interesting. We have to do a little assembly, which is very rudimentary, and then we're going to test it. And um, if this works, and my pet actually can read disks now, finally, after so much time and so many months and upgrades, um, I can finally go and continue my project, the 5041 to pet adapter, and I can repair the um, Commodore double floppy for the pet, stuff like that. So let's dive into it. So these are the parts for Pet Disc Max version 2 by Michael Hill and I'm going to assemble it and then I'm going to test it. This is a disc emulator or SD and Wi-Fi disc emulator for the Commodore Pet. So since I have some pending pet projects as you may know if you are regular to this channel, still have my uh, double floppy drive which I have to repair and I still have my uh, homemade interface which uh, makes it possible to connect a standard 1541 to a pet and at some point I noticed that I never checked if the pet actually uh, can read from disk and write to disk if that actually works so I went ahead and ordered this pet disk max and it took about two months to get here or one and a half I'm not quite sure was stuck in uh, in some storage facilities and uh, in customs and yeah, now it's here. So let's assemble this, this which is just a simple soldering job. And then let's go ahead, build a SD card, which shouldn't be too hard, and try it out on my trusted pet. So let me quickly take you uh, through this assembly. The first step is to put on the uh, connector here and it gets on the printed side and then you have to put this pass through connector on the back here so you can uh, attach another printer or disk drive and then you have to put in this pin header which provides the 5 volt power which is needed, which we get through this clip lead, which we have to clip onto some 5 volt power source inside the pad. Yeah, so that is pretty much it. Okay, that should do the assembly. Nice. Okay, brought the pet out. This is my 2001-8 uh, pet and I have the Pet Disc Max version 2 here. And as you can see, this 8-pin connector is right above this connector and if I try to plug it in here, that connector is in the way. So if you watch Michael's video where he assembles this, Michael being the inventor of this, you can see that his pad has a little bit more room up here. So I now can cut a hole into my pad, which I'm not going to do. Or I can desolder this connector and put in the wire, which only uh, goes into this one pin here uh, and then connects inside the pad to 5 volts directly to the board and that will make it work. So I'm going to do this now. So if you have a pad 
2001-8 or any 2001 for that, uh, you might want to skip the part where this is being soldered on. Okay, so I desoldered the connector, which was here, and put on some electrical tape, and I did solder this one to the board directly. Um, all the other connectors are for programming the ESP32, which right now there's no firmware update from Mike, so I guess I'm good for now. And if I have to do this, I will just uh, put on some header on the other side and go from there. Yeah, so let's plug it in and see if it works. Okay, so now it plugs into the machine. There's a little room between the board and the casing. So, well, I'm not quite sure if this is enough. So I'm pretty glad that I put some electrical tape on there. So now I have to put this in. I have to go through here or put it in here first and connect this inside to a five volt uh, power supply. Okay, so I did decide to squeeze that connector in there. You can see it goes right beside that. And if we go around the pad, take a look, the connector is right there. And that we have now to connect to a five volts line, which according to Michael should be that ship, that ship right here. So according to the data sheet, 6520 is right here and pin 20 is the last pin in this row here. So we will just hook up to that pin. Let me check if I can get a good camera angle here. Seems to be on there. Let's just hope that it stays in place. Let me quickly check this is another 6520 so we could have also put it there make sure the notch is there that if you do this you actually have to uh, think the other way around so it would be the pin in the corner there okay so let's hook it up to some power and see if it works okay so first try of course did not work it was just stuck when i typed in directory or catalog it just stuck so I was uh, frustrated for a while and now about two hours later I just tried to reseat uh, the 6520s because these PIA chips um, are responsible for the data set handling and the disk drive handling and uh, or the IEEE 488 port on which the drives for the pad are connected. So after reseating multiple times cleaning the connectors I finally managed to load something on this beast of a machine which well I I'm always astounded that it still works I just can't uh, imagine that still didn't get to clean it properly as you can see because I'm too worried if I just do anything to it rather than the usual uh, things like upgrading the ROM so that I can at least use the disk drive. Now I feel that I can actually continue with my other projects but let's first take a look at the Pet Disk Max version 2 and um, its possibilities. I almost forgot of course I did pull uh, a pad while <laughs> pad, uh, soldering pad while um, desoldering this 8-pin connector and so I had to do a botch wire to at least power this thing because there was no power. Yeah, that was uh, another nice little failure. Uh, thankfully this thing has a red LED which blinks if you switch it on. Let me show you. And it blinks as long as it tries to access the disk and tries to connect to the Wi-Fi and now the light is solid and now you can use it just like a normal disk drive and uh, you can also use a PHP script on your own web server or the one on Michael's web server to access um, kind of a virtual drive via the internet which is quite nice. Okay let's start up the pad and let's see what happens. So there's the start screen 
which might or might not flicker depending on the socket quality of the video chip and today the socket quality is a bit flaky so maybe we get a little flicker flickering but uh, nothing to worry here so if i type in directory i get all the programs on the sd card and never mind the atari uh, that is just a um, co2 sd sd card which i used for my atari 800 xl you might have seen the video and now i can just go and load uh, yeah the a is a bit hard to press um let's say aliens yeah, still the a aliens comma eight just like on the c64 and here we go load it nice huh let's run this Cursor 16 aliens copyright by mike hamilton protect earth from invasion want directions yeah why not you are responsible for defending Earth from alien invaders. Move the gun left by pressing 4, right by pressing 6, fire by pressing shift. Return to begin. Okay. Let's do this. Uh, okay. That is not going the way you think it is. <coughs> no, I don't want to try again. Thank you. Um, yeah, you can also load via the man, load via the classic way with a dollar sign and get your directories. If you have a um, D64 image file, which also work, you can just um, go in there by typing uh, load dollar dash um, directory name or name of the d64 image and it will then uh, go into that if I'm not completely mistaken um, and with dot dot you get back uh, one directory up but I also configured this um, with a simple configuration text file which you can edit on your PC put on the SD card in the root directory and then you are able to also load from another device you can tell the pad disk max in this configuration file which device to use i leave it at eight for now uh, until i have a, a real disk drive attached so we can also use uh, the wi-fi connection on this thing and you have to configure this wi-fi connection in the configuration file um, and I have configured a Wi-Fi drive at 10 and that connects to um, Mike's, Mike being the creator of this Pet Disk Max, uh, website, which is a PHP script, which returns a list of files like this. And you can then go just like on the local SD card and load stuff from here. Let's go for LAM, whatever that may be. 10 and now this is loading through the magic of the internet lem creative computing directions yes sir the object is to land your lem on the moon with the lowest possible velocity you control thrust with the numeric keys 0 to 9 don't return don't return if you give up, hit return and the LAMS computer will take control. Hit return to begin game. Okay. Thrust 9, thrust 5. Not quite see where this is heading. Go for nine again. It should now. Yeah, it's decreasing velocity. And that may land the thing. Could be a bit too much because, uh, well, maybe it works. 
course now it's going up again. Let's go for five. Oh, no, I have to go for zero to. And now let's try two. Uh, okay, I guess we crashed. Yeah, so that is uh, LEM, as it seems. Okay, so that was loading via the internet. Um, so this is quite a nice device. Um, I now actually have a way to load uh, games and stuff without using the tape drive, which is a little nerve wracking. Sometimes it works or most of the time it works, but it's slow. So that's pretty nice and it's compact <laughs> as far as the pad goes. <laughs> it can be compact. As you can see, this is quite the mountain of a computer. Uh, but it's uh, still much more compact than using the double floppy drive, which is just another brick in the wall um, and a big one at that one. Um, yeah, so that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and if you like that content, stay tuned because now I know that my pet actually can load from disk and I now can finally go and fix the double floppy drive and I can finally finish my IEEE 488 interface for the 1541. Yeehaw. Until next time. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share and comment helps a lot. Until next time. Bye bye.